your host, making us both co-hosts yes. of the program. And welcome to the Tommy Show. Thanks for having us along today, and welcome to the Sully Band. I just got a question, James. Fantastic job, by the way. Well done. Woo! Love this. By the way, right after this show, I mean, literally the second the show is over today, yeah. we head right down to Imperial Beach Pier to play Hesfest today. It's the IB Pier, am I correct? Yes. yes we go is. on at 2.45 today. Our good friend Mike Hess, would you please come down and join us and we'll sit there and we can say hi to you and we can play uh, at Request. zero requests uh, whatsoever, <laughs> ever. We'll never play Brown Eyed Girl, so don't ask. Uh, and uh, well, I, when I leave later, and they have stayed later sometimes, I just gotta go. They start playing some of the favorites, Precious and Few. Uh, Freebird! Brown, brown Eyed Freebird. Girl. Oh no. no. Uh, oh no. See, Tra Trace. That's IV. You, you gotta know, know where you're at. You know, Trace, remember how, remember how polite and stuff Trace, our drummer, was? Um, and now, you know, he's, he's got a mouth and he likes to run it. His new name is Lippy. That's the whole deal. Uh, no, we're glad to have him here, and uh, and of course he's part of the Day Trader Trio on the Big Biz Show. Yeah, Actually, is. it's a, it's the Day Trader Quattro, babe, because now we got Mark Hatters. Great to see you guys. Can I have a blam of something? How about a James Taylor, uh, or I mean a J well, or James, James Brown. Brown would probably be better. All right, Ready? three, four. Yeah. Wow. I guess I guess the only three of them got paychecks this week. <laughs> Maybe we could try that gotcha. in post. Ooh. Very good. All right, Tommy Sablon, what do we got today? I don't know. I, I'm still bummed out over the Olivia Newton-John um, news. I saw a picture of you and Olivia Newton-John several years ago when you had acid-washed jeans. <laughs> Those are shorts, by the way. Wow, wow that's scary. Uh, wow. <laughs> when your shorts were so high back in the mom jean days, and we all had them. The, we all had, this we was all 19, had them. We all had the denim shorts. 1998. And they were acid-washed, though. Nice. And your T-shirt was tucked in. It's fantastic. Ooh. Listen, uh, that that was the look. Yeah, Still, 1998. All right. And, uh, she played at Belmont Park. But well, you guys were together. There's the photo right there. Uh, that's the one. Well, maybe not acid wash, but, but it was, those uh, are shorts. It was, it was a 1998 Star 100.7. Olivia Newton-John played a coaster concert where she performed like five songs. Really? And then the... Was it the tracks or was there a band there? there was, it was the tracks. Okay. And then I was to go up on stage to interview her after it. Did you get, and then, did you get nervous? But, after, but the, the week leading up to it, I was saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to ask her to sing. You're the one that I want. Did you it, sing it, with her? But wait, wait, wait. But for the week before, I practiced. Okay. And I, I just practiced the song All right. like this. All right. Go ahead. I got chills. They're multiplying. Yeah, I was. That I was, was good. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. That was really that good. That was time. excellent. Can no, we, I don't can know. We, no, me, no, no. Start I can do better. Huh. Let me hear it again. Two, three. Yeah. Come on. One, two. I got chills. Four there. They're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Because the power you're supplying. Keep it going, man. It's electrifying. 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 Better shape up. But I practiced that song. Wait a minute. This is, that's fantastic. <laughs> Who but do we I, have nice. that can sing the background on that? James? <laughs> Trace. Trace. <laughs> there you All right, go. let's do it again. All right. Huh. All right. Two. Hey. Uh. Okay, there this I am on fantastic. stage. Yeah. Job. But there we were on Fantastic But job. there we were. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I hate, to, I, 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 I hate yeah. to start a sentence with that's the problem with your singing. <laughs> but the pro you need to sing in a higher register. You are fantastic as a tenor. Hey, but, right? But there right we there. were on stage, and I was asking her questions, and I go for it. And I say, Olivia, will you do it? You're, you're the one that I want with yeah. me. We already have the track. And she says, sure. And then she sang it. Sure. 
and we did it. We did the song, and the crowd, I already had the crowd, and the crowd was like a 1,000 people, and so they just cheered and cheered. Well, I can imagine. And then, and then when we went backstage, she was happy. You know, it was before selfies, but she right. was happy, but her manager. Was not happy? Oh. Her manager said, Tommy, come here. What happened? And she yelled at me. The manager yelled yeah, at you? The manager Why? Yelled at me because, you know, didn't want any surprises. And so, oh. uh, so she yelled at me, and uh, I get that all the but, time. But I get, but I, but I can say, I know, I But understand. I can say, I sang with Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. Fantastic. Well yeah. done. Well, I guarantee that this band was better than that band. It was a track. Yeah. yeah. This band. Hey, how's that? That's the bar. You're better yeah, than a track. You're better than the track. That's fantastic. <laughs> so all right, what do we, we got, got going of, on today? I think we have some guests. guests. All right, let's get. Them let's going. bring out the first one, ladies and gentlemen. He just signed a two-year deal with his partner, Tammy, on KSON, the most famous John in San Diego, John Flynn. Oh, All right. That's your own? No, let's just get I just brought another one for you. You just sit down there. Hey, there you go. What's up, John? Hey, there you go. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Come on, it's easy. Look, that's enough. Handshake's enough. I, I saw you guys starting to <laughs> grasp over there. How's it going, fellas? How's Great. your, uh, did you buy a new house, new pool, new car, new set of clubs? What? I mean, look, you always know these new contracts come with a little something, something. Two more years in the sunshine. Oh, that's good. So, uh, right. happy to have a job. Good for Two you. Two years ago, I sat in my kitchen broadcasting. Yeah, for not COVID. Not knowing I'd ever come back again. <laughs> for COVID, right? And I think I said to Tammy, I wonder if this is going to be it. I don't. I don't think they're gonna bring us back. I mean, they fired did all. Did you our really think that? I did, 100. percent I thought it's, it's so funny. I thought the opposite because I was doing the same thing, and we were booked on 52 gigs that year. Wow. We started doing Zoom videos, right? Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna explode. I thought exactly the opposite because I thought, well, more people are gonna be consuming media than ever before right now, and I wonder if it just gives a resurgence. Well, I think probably the fact that they fired all my friends. <laughs> uh, kind of, oh, there's that. You know, I was like, oh, are we next? I mean, thank God. I, we had that little survival guilt, the survival guilt thing going as well, and it just, again, two years ago, just, and we were all kind of in a different mode well, back of course. then, not to bring yeah. everything down. But so anyway, two years later, I'm very thankful. And and uh, are they paying radio what they used to pay back in the uh, Hall of Famers uh, day back there? No, they're not. <laughs> I can tell you, you know, I got in right at the right time. And then I didn't. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was like the last three years of good paying radio. And then all of a sudden, for the next 20 years of radio, it was like, D -d -d -d. oh, you should do endorsements. Endorsements for yeah, all the money. Yeah, yeah, right. right. That's what they tell you. Well, I'm lucky enough. I've got a little, little house about a mile up the road, uh, right in the village, right about five blocks from the beach. So I, I have zero complaints. On Carlsbad. Oh. Yeah, Carlsbad Village. Good for you. Ooh. You know, our studios are, are up here in Carlsbad, yeah. California. The loft one here studios. By the way, big announcement. Uh, next year, uh, at this time, by actually January, we're moving into our new studios. Really? Bigger, about three times bigger. What are you doing with this place? It's beautiful. Oh, I want to turn it into a 7 Eleven. I think. Uh, really? Like that. It's yeah. a very nice one. Trace needs a place to crash every once in a while to store his drum kits. No, but, but Carlsbad is such a great, I just want to shout out to City of Carlsbad hey. because what yeah. a great place to, to, to live and, and, and uh, raise a family. Um, when I was married many, many years ago, we, we started it here in Carlsbad before we started nice. experiencing everything else. But great to have you, man, and congratulations on the new contract. Thank you. So honored to be here Good again. Stuff. Thanks for having us back. You were here a year ago. It was almost exactly a year yeah. ago because I was in my Padres gear yeah, going, you, and to, I going think, to an afternoon game. And I think you're going to do an afternoon game You know game what? Here. I decided today I want to hang out and chill. Uh, right. I'm going to pay my respects to Rusty. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Russ and was here last time, wasn't and, he? And we got That's to watch right. him work, uh, watch him in his all of his glory. I know Tammy wants to probably share the story when she comes out as well. Had to watch him. No, no. No, no, no. Oh, come on. I had never saw it. the auctioneer side of him. Oh, Rockshaneer Russ. Insanely yeah. talented. Do we still, I hope his websites are still up because he had three websites. He had russisfunny.com because russisfatandbald.com was taken. <laughs> and um, we had uh, Auctioneer Russ and there was another one. And they all, so he built them all himself. Russ fashioned himself also, as I said, at his memorial. But there's a reason why he had three different ones. Yeah. What's the reason? Well, I don't remember what the because reason was. Because he didn't know how to figure, he didn't figure out, he couldn't figure out how to, how to change it up. Oh, that's Remember? right. So every, all three websites look like the exact same website with a different... <laughs> yeah, it's like at yeah. the old Sizzler. You, you, had his the, you had the Santa Fe steak or you had the pineapple steak and they just switched over the pepper for the pineapple and stuff like that. It's that exactly gross. like that. That was fantastic. Yeah. All right, let's bring out your partner. Right, here we go. All right, she is the first lady of country music in San Diego. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Tammy. Oh, is that America? 
Target sweetheart I guess? Hey, my goodness. Yeah. There you go. It was so cool seeing the photo of you guys sitting at a table signing that two-year deal. Let's oh, thank you. Are you being serious I'm, with us? Yes. Because we kind of we kind of bounced that back and forth. Um, like I don't want you to succeed? No, no, <laughs> not what you just said. Whether or not to put Without that out. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was great. It was great. I mean, you got to root root for people in radio. No, yeah, for sure. Mean, God radio bless you guys. Is, those contracting issues have changed, haven't they? Though? Yeah. Do you remember in the day when it was actually, we had the leverage? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was. A long time ago. Can I look no, at the horizon right. for But that? we did it. And, and I would argue you still have leverage. Otherwise, you don't get a new contract. But it, it's certainly corporate radio is different corporate, than when we had. Mm -hmm. When you pulled up in the back of the parking lot and you had one satellite dish, uh, you know, like when I was at AM 1130, KSDO. Right. And it was literally us and Kogo on top of the Better Business Bureau. I mean, it, it was the best thing ever because it was, it seemed folksy at that point. Yeah. Right. It was folksy where I first started too. Um, my first full time in Wisconsin, not Arizona, but my first full time in Wisconsin, it looked like the inside of a 73 Chevy van. It actually <laughs> had orange carpeting on the walls. Yeah, that was the acoustic and, soundproof. Yeah, and it at, was. at that time, people could still smoke in the studio, awesome. right? And then, then it wow. moved out to the hallway yeah. with a little ashtray that sat on top of the on-air light. I mean, it was mean just bean, old school. the beanbag ashtray. Yeah, right? right? Or, right the, next to or the, the abalone shell. Yeah, right next to the no, AM the transmitter. Or the half-empty Mountain Dew can. Right. Right next to the AM transmitter, you had to open this really heavy door, and like you would have to turn all these things to turn it on, and when it came on, you're always worried it was going to blow up. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Wow, now well, that's radio. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of stuff that went on in the radio studio back then. It yeah. wasn't just smoking. No. <laughs> there's a reason there's a payola thing we have to sign it right here. <laughs> hey, but today, John and Tammy, you guys are synonymous with country music and radio in San Diego. Thank you. You guys are San Diego. But you're also famous in another market or two, right? Because when you Google you, when you Google John and Tammy, yeah. you're you're missed in other markets. Oh, that's very nice. We we came here from Madison, Wisconsin, 11 years ago, and I, I can't I hear it in Tammy's voice. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Not at all. I, I don't think you know. I, I think I said it last time we were here that despite that, especially around you, you guys, we feel like the new the new kids still. 11 years, and I think at this point, one of San Diego's longest running morning shows at this point, but still. Feeling brand new. So when you say that we're synonymous in San Diego, I still get chills. I'm getting chills right now. Um, but yes, we are. We have a, a strong following in Madison, uh, in Wisconsin. Um, we've got one listener in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Butch, my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my brother-in-law. <laughs> but uh, he listens every day. Uh, but but yeah, it's 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 really an honor. And I, I mean. We love it here. We love it here very much. I uh, love it in San Diego, or love it in Madison too. We just had a lot of good friends there. Great things happened to us there. Our families were raised there. It was it's a beautiful place to to be. And are you guys? You guys are back in the studio, right? Obviously. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you guys, you guys were broadcasting from home for a while. Mm -hmm. Long time. We did a few, few things with you, Tommy, that uh, we had to zoom in to to do with you. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there's a rabid country western music fan base here in San Diego. I love how you still say country western. Well, what am I supposed to say? Just country. Just country. Yes. How about country and western? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. You know what? Just country. <laughs> also <laughs> not acceptable. All right. Wait, 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 wait. I, correction. I there's only right now. there's only two types of music. Country and western. Country and western. All right. So, but are, are the fans rabid here like more than anywhere? Well, because uh, they seem like when I hear when I see people that are into country, they're yes. eh, 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 eh. like, what is that? What is that venue that they asked us to play? And we say, oh, we're kind of an R&B blues band. We're not really the country band. But there's would have been Moonshine Flats. Moonshine yes. Flats. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, I wish we had a Moonshine Flats for blues. I mean, Belly Up's probably the closest thing, but right. they but seem like they're just more into it here than anywhere else. They, they truly are, and it was one of the things that we were worried about when we first came here. Like, what's country like in California. They have fish, they they have fish well, tacos there. Well, and you were thinking, you know, you hear about L.A., which yeah. is a way different animal, and I'm so glad that we're not there, because the, the country roots here are really strong and really deep, and Tommy, I know that you're aware of this, too, and young. Mm -hmm. uh, the, when we do, like, a 90s throwback weekend, yeah. and you're talking to people in their 20s who are singing along to every, they know all the words to all the songs because they grew up with it, with their parents right. playing right. it for them, and they love it, and it's huge here. It really is. And a lot of great talent, Sarah Petit, Morgan Lee, Right? Love them. Yes, 100%. Sarah, I just I think I just awarded her her 30th in a row best country artist from San Diego Music Awards yeah, this past year. She's amazing, yeah, she amazing. Is. She's been on our show a few times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's, a, she's been she's here. Fabulous. fabulous. All right, talent. let's bring out some more guests. All right, let's do it. All right, Ready? from Dream Han, from the Wonder Bus, from the Wonderfront Festival, ladies and gentlemen, my buddy, Ernie Han.
Magic Ernie, Bus, huh? You know what Welcome. the Magic Bus is all about, right? Wonder Bus. The Wonder Bus. Wonder Bus, baby. I would like to see you guys broadcast from the roof of the Wonder Bus. Okay. That's another. That would, Ernie, I should do that. I'm easy. Done. <laughs> That because they put bands hard. up there and people surround. If you guys did a remote, that'd be actually an interesting remote, wouldn't it? That's a great idea, and so is the Wonder Bus idea. So yeah, exactly. I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, it's good stuff. So Wonder you're Bus putting together Wonderfront Festival. It's coming up later on this year. Yeah. You've got to deal with country music, right? How do you feel about You've country music? You've got to deal with country music. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> country Dave. music in San Diego. <laughs> oh, the country music in San Diego is fantastic. Yes. You I know, mean, when the years I was at the arena as well, and I mean, it seems like yesterday, but I remember going back in 1992, uh, we just started taking over the arena and went back with my dad to Nashville. Nashville was very different back in 92 as well. And sure. going by all the agencies, trying to get them to bring more country music to San Diego. And so we did uh, um, George Strait a couple times back in 93 and 94. Uh, he had a gal that opened for him one of those years, Faith Hill. Maybe you've heard of her. Maybe how? Huh? Um, Potentially. And so it's great. It's always been a good market for it, but it's really grown. And uh, country in general is just fantastic. They're, they're Fun events to be at. Well, I have to ask you: Were, were those? You know, as I was asking them, were the fans different for country music? <laughs> <laughs> like compare Journey to country music, or compare uh, Eric Clapton to country music. Are the fans the same? Or I, or are Eric more... has a little country in him. Say, Eric has, has a little country. I heard a Nickelback song today. I'm sorry. You know, they're breaking up groups back during COVID. I think that's the first one they should have started with. Sorry, Dawes. <laughs> My guitar tech works for Nickelback. But I, I heard a Nickelback song sound like country this morning also. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was just wondering, because the fans seem like they're having more fun with country. It's, I sort of want to go to that side. I think country is, you know, trended too. It's, as it's changed over the years, it's it's young and it's fun. I mean, it's, and, and these Country is no longer the, the old country you know it as. It's it's rock and roll country and it's fun and it's um yeah, it's it's under country, but it's very different. We music. need to write some country music, kids. Come on. It's all only about get, life. Only to get interviewed by these guys on the air. It, it's that, just that's, about life. That's all it is. I love it. You know? We all right. Two more guests. Two more guests to introduce. All right. Two more important guests. Yes. I'll say. That's someone from Challenge Athletes Nation and a surfer spreading love all over the world. Really interesting story. On the air's on the air. Ernie Hans here. John, John and Tammy with their new. Did, did you bring the contract so we can show it on? <laughs> I'll just got it in the car. See you in a minute. Do you think they'll stay ahead of the Giants? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll bet anybody on that one right now. That's, that they'll stay ahead plus of the Giants. Plus, we've got 13 games, and it's like the we're, Nationals. We're already, we're already and, six and games ahead of them. Not a chance. Uh, but any, any chance? Not a chance. Oh, and not a chance the Giants out. are ahead of us. Well, and wait a second. I'll make that bet with anybody Is right there now. any chance they can get closer to the Dodgers? Why would we need they to? They can't take the Dodgers. Right now, you know, based on the wild card system, all you should be looking at right now is you want to catch Atlanta. That's exactly right. Because That's if you get, exactly right. Because if you, the, the new format now is the, the, the worst division winner, which right now is you know, Philadelphia or St. Louis is in that St. spot. Louis. Right now, if, the, if it started today, it would be St. Louis um, versus number uh, three. Which is in the Padres. Yeah. We're, we're, we're number we're four, number th we're number we're four, number four now. Right now, it would be us versus St. Louis. Yeah. And it would be Atlanta versus whoever's ahead of us, uh, Philadelphia. But you just want to get in the game at this point. I mean, but the Dodgers are but, 16 games but what's ahead. Different you're not about catch them. It, what's different about it this year is the top two seeds of that wild card. It's going to be the division winner that would yeah. have the worst record. Mm -hmm. And then number two, host all three games in that first round right. in, their, in their market. All we have to do is get there. Right. Everyone, everyone's zero and zero. Nailed. We got the arms to be anybody. We got to pull our offensive heads out of our asses. Wow. And I say ours because I played shortstop. Well, I, James didn't. But <laughs> James, James didn't. Tripp's hitting good. So, you know, I think we're doing okay here. Once we figure that out, oh, yeah. we can take on anybody. I really smart. believe it. I, I, I believe, honestly, with those trades, we went from being uh, contenders to the playoffs to contenders to the World Series. 100%. I think, I think it really opened the door for us here. Now, of course, 
you know, You're Ernie right. and I and no, Tommy. he doesn't. He's I, such a dead Well, er, wait, wait, wait. Ernie yeah. and I no, and Tommy. Just the negative. But we've lived here what in is, this town is, our entire is, lives. What's your negativity Listen, here? Listen, I've been here 11 years now. That's I am, a, okay, I am youngster. A, I, am a, I am a massive Padres fan. Yeah. I've, I've been to a ton of games this year. I also went into a ton of games last year. And this is the exact same thing that we, I mean, exactly this time of year last year. I mean, also, same thing happened in 67, 83, 87, 88, 89. <laughs> and I love the optimism, and I love her positivity. I'm just going to latch myself onto you guys' trailer, and, and I hope Come on, man. to tape Definitely more Definitely different this year. And Tatis is coming back. Yeah, Tatis is coming back. Those bats can't go quiet that way for and five days. He's just re he's wrapping up rehab right now and had a double and a triple. Uh, yeah. and again, again, three head pitches, staff's but great, still. All that stuff. So it's, it's. It's uh, you, you want to catch Atlanta because you want that first series to have have those three games in San Diego. Otherwise, you're going to be on the road. Right. I know. How lucky are we? All How right. Are so we? By the way, we have a bill. This is negative. great to see. We have a billion and a half dollars uh, on the left. We have a billion dollars on the left side of the field and a half a billion dollars in the right in right in right field. Fantastic. Yeah, it's got to be fun as a fan. We have like a Yankees payroll right now. It's unbelievable. Let's see if we can put some numbers up there. The end, now, right? speaking of inspirational athletes, okay. listen to this. He's a Paralympics bronze medalist from the Tokyo 2020 Games. In 2018, he set the American record for the long jump. Ladies and gentlemen, Trenton Merrill. There we go. All right. You know, so you know that this program, and uh, starting with Big Biz Show, has been big uh, supporters of Challenge Athletes Foundation. In fact, Sully Entertainment Group, for the second year in a row, is the presenting sponsor to the Million Dollar Challenge. That's where we ride our bicycles down the coast from San Francisco to San Diego. 700 miles in seven days. This is my 12th year. I was. Wow, that's awesome. So if you send me and Tommy together, that's how big I was the first year. I'm not kidding. No, they can tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I was a taco shy of something. Like one more burrito. And I would have been like 350 or something like that. But but I will tell you, we've interviewed on either this show or the Big Biz Show or a national TV show, um, close to 300 athletes over the last 12 years. And every athlete uh, amazes me. And your story amazes me too. So first of all, welcome to the program, Trent. I want you to just tell your story from the beginning because it's really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you got a huge smile on your face like you do every day. It's, uh, so talk about that because that's part of the process. Definitely. Well, I'm excited to be alive and thankful to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Um, this is a true honor. Uh, when I was 14, um, I had dreams of being, being a professional athlete. And just one day, my best buddy and I were crossing the street. We didn't see a car coming. The car didn't see us. And we got hit by the car. I thought it was all a dream. I turned to my buddy to tell him with this crazy dream that we just got hit by a car. And instantly, it was reality. Yeah. So for me, I thought that my foot was broken and I was gonna you know, go back to school and have all my friends sign a cast. I imagined it being a green cast. And after about a month in the hospital, having the UCLA med staff team working on my leg, trying to keep my, my foot, like salvage it, eventually the doctor came in and essentially said that we can't save it anymore. And my whole world just flipped upside down. But God spoke to me that day. And then shortly after a Marine spoke to me and he encouraged me and told me that I can. I can do the things that I, I still dream of doing. And so I took that attitude and I said, you know what, despite what other people say, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to see what I can and can't do. And I realized that there's really not much that I can't do. And so after that, about three or four years later, um, after graduating from high school and playing in high school sports with, as an amputee, I thought about, about Paralympics. And I realized that my dreams are still possible. I was like, all right, God. So I just went gun ho put my head down, and, man, got to the grind. You know, what's interesting is that... When you lose a limb, whether you lose a limb through an accident or you lose a limb through being in battle, insurance will cover a walking leg or a regular wheelchair, but they consider athletics as, as a, a sort of a, a ice cream on the top. Right. Right? They, they think it's a luxury. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, a running leg, as you can say, goes anywhere from $15,000 to $30,000. Wow. $30,000 for a pair of running legs. So those, those, uh, those hand cycles and wheelchairs go even higher and of course now they have an adaptive surfing they've got adaptive skiing and so on and so forth so your life's been changed a little bit because of technology too and challenge athletes foundation correct 100 percent challenge athletes foundation is incredible they they've helped me get prosthetics sport prosthetics even like funding and stuff to pursue my career so right uh, companies like caf are unreal um, especially with my generation and the future up-and-coming athletes was was that was the marine that talked to you from operation rebound 
No, oh, he Sam? was, um, he, you know, I don't know if he was part of anything, but the prosthetist, the guy that was making my sockets at the yeah. time, he was making that marine sockets, and he's like, hey, will you go talk to this young man? And I was only 14, so he was no. like, yeah. But wait a minute. You broke world, you have a world record, American record. That's How right. did that happen? I mean, that took a lot of heart and work, right? Like, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just the, the process, you know. Um, I, I wanted to make podiums, and I wanted to win medals for my country, and part of that is uh, working hard. And so I just listen to my coaches, and every year is one of those things, like, you look back and you reflect, and you say, how can I improve? And so it's just the, the result of hard work um, day in, day out. Yeah, it's good stuff. Can I ask good. a question? Uh, sure. Do you still talk to the Marine? Did you keep in contact Dude, with him? I wish. I wish. I can't. I can't find him. Oh, well, yeah. Man. So I'm gonna. Um, that would be cool one day to. He had a good part in out. not. I mean, changing your life, but maybe saving your life in a weird way, right? Oh, for real. So when it, it initially happened, when I first ha had my foot amputated and I was in the hospital, I remember asking the doctor, like, you know, can I still play soccer? Can I still ride motorcycles? Can I still run? And he looked at me. He's like, I, I don't. I don't know, Trenton. I'm not sure. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, this doesn't. You know, it's not really encouraging as a 14-year-old and yeah. freshman in high school, and you already have all these other insecurities. But yeah. when he came in, I asked him the same thing, and I had some time to think about other insecurities. And so I asked him, I was like, dude, do you still run? Do you still ride motorcycles? Do you date girls? Like, yeah. all the important stuff. Sure. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. He's like, dude, I run every day. I re-enlisted. I run with my platoon. And he's like, I still ride motorcycles, so can you. And he's like, and I brought my girlfriend here today. Yeah. I was like, no right. way. You know what's interesting is, is Challenge Athletes Foundation has a, has a segment called Operation Rebound, and it's called From Frontline to Finish Line. And when, when a soldier wakes up missing a limb or, or is unable to walk, there is a Challenge Athletes representative there from, the, from CAF, operate, usually Nico Marco Longo is the guy's name who runs the Operation Rebound. But there's also a wheelchair athlete or a prosthetic athlete standing right there next to them when they wake up talking about the same stuff, which is what made me ask that. It's an unbelievable organization right here in San Diego, challengedathletes.org. It, uh, it was founded by Bob Babbitt, of course, Jeffrey Esikow, uh Kozlowski, who, uh, who does a lot of triathlons. Did I just see Babbitt out in the, in the yeah, green room out there? Yeah. We've got to pull him in for a second Absolutely. here today, you know what? Right, and we have another guest to bring on. All right. Good to have you guys all. John and Tammy, Trenton Merrill, Ernie Hahn, and Orr. Hey, we should bring out Bob Babbitt. I All right, Babbitt, where is, where is Bob Babbitt? Do we have any walk? Well, we should have some walking music for Bob Babbitt. Just figure out something. <laughs> All right. How about Journey? How about uh, Don't Stop Believing? Hit it. Look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's the iconic <laughs> no. San like Diegan no. from Challenge Athletes Foundation, the co-founder, Mr. Bob Babbitt. What a surprise! You what know, a surprise to have you! We took a, we, I didn't know you were going to be here. We took a break in the Landis National Tour uh, to, to come by, so I can't, uh, you know, can't miss my man Trenton this or Ernie. Up, Babbitt. Babbitt, isn't, don't you always see Babbitt with a microphone in his hand like that? Uh, this is the way and we He live. has breakfast like that. Well, and, <laughs> so, and uh, I think he sleeps in the visor. I think he does do. sleep in the visor. The visor's good. The visor may be... An 1888 bit. call. They want their sideburns back. <laughs> oh, baby. Right, that was funny. That was funny. Good. That was good. I like that. Martin, hey, Van, uh, Martin Van Buren look. Can I say real quickly that I talked to Eric Cochran yesterday, who's yeah, the yeah. director of, of the Landis movie. You know, yes. you remember Landis was here on the show a couple, a couple weeks ago. Just Watch Me. Just Watch Me is the name of the movie, and of course, he has no legs, no hands. No limits. No limits. And of course, he's awesome. he's a... Uh, he's on his way to playing baseball oh, he's, on, at a very high level. This month, Sully, since July 10th, he's thrown out the first pitch at the Padres game, the Yankees game, Giants. the Giants game, the Astros game, and the Phillies game this last Saturday night. Yeah. 
And when we were up in Boise, we were in a theater called The Egyptian that holds 700 people. We had 500 people in there wow. to see the film. And there was a family from uh, uh, Idaho Falls who I found out actually have a daughter who's also a quad amputee. No kidding. She was in a car accident when she was nine, lost all four limbs in the car accident, had never met another amputee. Brought them down to Boise to meet Landis. Good Morning America filmed that, and it's actually airing today. So a lot of fun stuff happened. Well, look at this cat here, Trenton Merrill. Unbelievable. So, you know, I was trying to, I was awkwardly trying to, to discuss frontline to finish line operation rebound. So you can probably give a better overview of that. But that's a really, a really impactful program that you guys have. Well, and the main, pro main issue is that people in the military, they'll get the equipment. They'll get a prosthetic leg or a, a wheelchair for sport, which is, doesn't happen to regular insurance. But the problem is, what sport do they play? And so when you have a one arm Willie Stewart go to Walter Reed and bring his kayak, and the ad they've been told, you're missing an arm, you'll never be able to, to turn the kayak over, and then Willie is doing it, right. then they're going, oh, wait, I can still kayak, I can still run. So that, that's a big part of what Nico does, is bring the troops in to help that next person. Plus, what a great name, Nico Marco Longo. It's the best, <laughs> right? Right, he could be a hitman. Marco <laughs> Longo. He could be Every a mafia time. boss. He could be a hitman. Yeah, Whatever could. he wants to do. Nico hey, the elbow. When I asked you about Trent Merrill a few days ago, you lit up. You smiled. Yeah, what do you think special. of this young man? Well, he, he, when when Trenton comes out, when, one of the big things we do is you got a kid who's the the new Trenton. He's 14 years old who just lost his leg in a motorcycle wow. accident. Doesn't know what's next. This guy comes out there along with uh, Justin Fonksava and so many of our other athletes. They understand their role is to help the next person because the same military guy who helped him, he needs to fulfill that obligation to help the next one. And I know Trenton feels that's a, a very important role for him. Yep, absolutely. The, uh, the, the, uh, well, the interesting thing about Challenge Athletes Foundation it started right here in San Diego. Tell that story real quick because this is a really interesting story on how it happened because it was only supposed to be a one-time deal. It really was. So Jim McLaren was a 300-pound football player at Yale, and he was taking acting classes in New York City, was on his motorcycle, gets hit by a bus, thrown 90 feet in the air, dead on arrival, lives, ends up losing his lower left leg, comes back from that to run a 316 marathon with a walking leg. Wow. This is like late 80s. And that's, I had a magazine called Competitor Magazine. I'm covering Jimmy. He comes to Hawaii to the Ironman World Championship. It goes 10 hours 42 at the Ironman World Championship with a prosthetic. Which line. is lightning fast. Which is ridiculous. Takes Top 20% of everybody in the race. Take me and Tommy 24 hours to do this thing. At least. Yes. You'd need a light stick. You'd right. be out there for years. <laughs> <A light stick. laughs> for years. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be out there. A, light, talking, stick a, a light stick, a search party. <laughs> you'd, we'd be looking for him. A couple they'd of find, ID bags. They'd find Sully 24 hours in at a diner in downtown Waikiki. <laughs> 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 Can I get a can That's I get exactly a double right. double over here? Yes, what's, exactly. what's going on? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so Jimmy now is traveling the world. Everybody knows who he is. He's the Babe Ruth of amputee athletes. Eight years later, he's on his bike doing a race in Mission Viejo. A van goes through a closed intersection, hits the back of his bike, propels him headfirst in a pole. Guy's an amputee, becomes a quadriplegic. Again, oh, two again. times. Yeah. So then myself and my buddies Jeffrey Eskow and Rick Kozlowski, we all knew the sport of triathlon. We're like, well, let's put a triathlon out in La Jolla Cove. We'll raise 25 grand. And one of the things that happens to you when you become paralyzed is you lose independence. So we'll get him a van with hand controls to give Jimmy independence. But, we'll that, but, but this is all this was going to be, Bob. Yeah. Uh, let's do a fundraiser yeah. to get buy Jimmy him a van. van. So we raised 49. 125 our, yeah. million dollars later. <laughs> we, we, we raised 49. We think our job's done. And then three amputee women come up to us who were there participating in support of Jimmy. And they go, listen, it's great we did for Jimmy, but did you know when you get injured, your health insurance will cover a walking around leg or an everyday wheelchair. Nothing to do with sport is covered because, as Sully said earlier, it's a luxury item. And we all know sport isn't a luxury item. It's a huge, right. huge part of who we are and what we do. So that's what we got will our 513C. Change? No. I don't. Well, I to hope this it does. day, the insurance it's companies still, the still feel that it's a luxury. How much? Uh, talk about how many grants and how much money. So we've now raised in 29 years 147 million dollars. We sent out over 40,000 grants to athletes in 73 countries, all 50 states of Puerto Rico. Wow! And uh, it's and 104 different sports. Yeah. He's this guy's a, a long jumper, right? Yeah. But there's wheelchair there's the sled hockey wheelchair basketball you name it we're providing grants for and there's and in san diego california there's tons of events that you can get involved in totally. you know in, in raising money for for caf you know one of them is the million dollar challenge i'm not sure if we're sold out this year for that or not, not. yet no i think people but there's a couple of spots ride. if you want to go from tommy's riding this year again he said right. he was riding it's like his fifth year in a row he's come riding. on year in a row it's 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 Tommy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've, he still hasn't gotten on a bike yet. Yeah. That's not really a limitation. He can still do it. 
it's like luxury a, item. I don't, I don't mean to jump in. We want you to jump in. Yeah. The money is an amazing thing, but the lives. That's that, the best part. I mean, yeah. listen to Trenton's story. A 14 year old kid who thinks he could. I'd rather be dead. You never know. I That's mean, the thing. Then, then next thing you know, he's inspiring that next kid. Right. Who's going to go to Paralympics and Mounts? You're a hero. You're an angel. Not a bitch, buddy. Anytime, you know. I'm just taking this with me. I'm just Awesome job. Yeah. Well, shiny. Will you guys shiny. not wait a year to come Sully back? Bit. What was that? Would you not wait a year to come back? This is the first time we got invited. You guys have Tommy. Tommy. I asked Tommy every week if you'll come back. <laughs> he, you know. We love you guys. Tommy <laughs> says. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but I mean, this is episode 94. Episode 100 hopefully will look similar to this okay. with yeah. a lot of people. But it won't be here. Because we've all see Tom see I don't you think our hundredth episode should be somewhere big where it we go out and let party. the people come out and have so multiple stadium. guests on. Yeah, he absolutely. he's he loves it here, so he's like a little yes. cozy comfort. Comfort, yes. comfort right? Yes. You know it works. Yeah. Gotta get out of your comfort zone, you know Tommy. What? How about the first big event at Snapdragon? Boom, there you guys there are. You go. Yeah, we'll, man. We'll play before Buffett. We'll play before we'll play Buffett. Before Buffett. <laughs> all right. We have another guest. This all right, here we go. This guy's cool. He's the CEO of Bob Swimwear. He's the founder of the I'm good, I'm good. So a couple days ago, I was looking through the paper and I saw a story up north of a guy named Nathan Flewellen uh, inspiring young black surfers. And I called you and you came on. What exactly are you doing? Because you're inspiring so many people across the world to, to surf. Yeah, well, you know, I started a great day in the Stoke. Yeah. So it was the largest gathering of black surfers in history. And it was an exciting event where we had a black surf competition for surfers across the African diaspora. We gave away free surf lessons, we had beach yoga, and we had an award ceremony to honor black surfing pioneer Sharon Schaefer, who was the first black female professional surfer, and Tony Corley, who started the Black Surf Association in 1975. Wow. When did you say, okay, here's what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna inspire young black surfers to do this. Was well, there a moment? Yeah, it started um, when I filmed my first show. I have, a, I have a TV show called Worldwide Nate African Adventures, and I featured the Zulu boys and girls in Durban, South Africa. Wow. So I started taking lessons in Venice Beach, and uh, when I got to Durban, I was, uh, the, 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 the kids, they were awesome. They had this like af this surfer vibe, but it was this African flavor where they're speaking Zulu and Osa and switching between languages, and I was like, I gotta get better at surfing so I can come back and surf with you guys. And I came back to California, been surfing ever since. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we had the events with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And so there were these paddle outs that the surf community came together to honor those people. But then it was just, um, it was getting tired. It was exhausting to come together because of uh, um, a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And so a great day in the Stoke was just about celebrating our existence. So we could just come and commune with each other because over the years we, we've learned and grown these friendships and discovered each other through, through screens. When did you start surfing? What year? 2017, consistently. Oh, Come on, what? you can do it, Trace. Wow. Trace, you can do wow. it. Wow. <laughs> so there's hope. Trace lives in Carlsbad. Come yeah. on, man. So there's hope for me. The original okay. Big Kahuna is up there on drums. <laughs> nice. And you're sitting next to a surfer right here in Ernie Hine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. Nice. That's how we. Remember how we met? 
Yeah. We were stepping. standing up paddleboarding at Dog Beach in the middle of the ocean. Yes, you got to come down and surf with me, surf Black's Beach. Okay. Yeah. I've heard Black's. Well, wow, like, right? Like near La Jolla, right? Oh, Black's yeah. Beach, man. Yeah. It's, it's the best surf spot. It's also yeah. the naked beach. That's what yes. I thought was the comedy. Well, that may be <laughs> your gig. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> what is Black's wow. Beach famous for for the entire city? Nudity. Really Thank you. Yeah. Really good <laughs> waves, but maybe if you go a mile north, Sully <laughs> being north on the, the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you like surfing? Man, I love, I actually love coming down to San Diego to surf. I yeah. feel like you guys, San Diego God. County has the East. best waves. Where do you live now? View. I live in L.A. L.A., okay. Yeah, so I call L.A. the, the hood breaks and then the, <laughs> the paradise breaks in San Diego County. But Grandview, uh, La Jolla, uh, Cardiff Reef, I just had some great time surfing down here. It's a, it, it really is something that you don't think about, about affinity groups surfing. But, you know, growing up here in San Diego surfing since we were eight years old, being dropped off at La Jolla Shores, there's a bunch of blonde-headed kids out there surfing all the time, and you never thought. And then all of a sudden, your friends, you know, from, from all walks of life get in the water. But it's interesting reaching out to that affinity group and, and saying, look, you know what? Here's something that we all need to enjoy, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, growing up, I, I've been swimming since I was five, five years old. I grew up in a pool. I grew up in a middle class, all-black neighborhood. So all I knew was, you know, black people knew how to swim. And as I got into my tw 20s, I started hearing that black people don't know how to swim. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, this is not true. And then so that was part of the, um, you know, my, my goal and my mission to, you know, set surfing as the zenith. And then, but really it's about getting more people to learn how to swim so they can save lives. You know, it's interesting. It's, it, I know what you're thinking. The adaptive surfing clinics that we do, he needs to be there, right? Oh, absolutely. The La Jolla Shores, by the way, so you can't get a better beach break in, best, anywhere. Best beach. Right? And we've been doing it for the last number of years with ISA. Now with surfing getting into the Olympics, there's a great chance by 2028 in L.A. that adaptive surfing is going to be in the Paralympics, and we're doing adaptive surf clinics all the time. They're great. Nice. It's getting nice. brand new people, people who are paralyzed, people missing legs, missing arms. Uh, you remember Liv Stone with sure. short arms and won the world championship. Yeah. There's no limit to what you can do as a surfer. Yeah, and everybody's been affected by, you know, adaptive, you know, lifestyle. We have a surfer in our community named Ty who's competing as well. And so, um, you, know, it's, you know, we all are touched by somebody. We need to make a connection there. There is a connection. 100%. Absolutely. We've already chatted about it. Yeah, as a transplant, I'm fascinated watching surfers, uh, and I'm frightened by it because it's so intimidating. The ocean, to me, is so intimidating, but I'm fascinating, and I'd love to do it. You can inspire me because I'm way too old to start, but maybe I'm not. How did you get past the intimidation of seeing these guys have been doing this their entire life? Sometimes they're not that friendly out there when they see somebody who's new out there. Was it intimidating at all? It doesn't kind of seem like it was. Hold on. Hold on to that answer. <laughs> That's how we keep you on your count. <laughs> That's how we do it. That's called a tease. And he is the tease master general. Oh, 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 man. Man. <laughs> Of course, and uh, I don't even know who else. Is it? Is it? You've been a surfer your entire life, right, Trip? That's right. Uh, you and your brother didn't you surf Del Mar when the, the before the, when the pier used to be there still? San Diego High School, the first surf PE. Surf PE. Oh, <laughs> Such a stoner. <laughs> Such a stoner. Oh my goodness. His Remember brother. when Surf PE came out? It was all sure PE. Yeah. <laughs> and then you drive down by Del Mar or any beach, and you see a bunch of kids out there at seven in the morning going. Oh, there's three <laughs> units. <laughs> hey, his brother that. is a legend. I mean, Peter Sprague. Oh, Peter Sprague's unbelievable. Yeah, Man. Peter Sprague, one of the one of the greatest Guitar guitarists uh, just in the country. Oh, I actually wow. had this. I had this. Uh, I collect guitars. I had this acoustic guitar, a flamenco guitar. And I said, it's been laying around. I gave it to Peter. He said, hey, Peter, take this. Peter was like a $4,000 guitar. I didn't even know it. So Peter is now playing one of the best guitars. He's one of the best you guitar players. You told me that story right. Man. It slowly came over with a guitar. Yeah. It was, and I said, I, only because I want to get next to Peter Sprague. I want him to play one of my guitars. But he's unbelievable. You should look him up. So John had a question. 
what was it? I just noticed what an intimidating bunch surfers can be, especially mm -hmm. if you're new and not good. So you're new. I can't imagine you're good just getting on board for the first time. How did you get past that intimidation, man? Well, it wasn't really an intimidation, because, I mean, I'm from the south side of Chicago. Who so. <laughs> 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 <You> intimidated who? <laughs> It's, it takes a lot to intimidate me. So I was like, it, you know, people are barking. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, nice. How, how you doing? Yeah, I wish you barked that thing in the water. Keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It is, yeah. but it's not just, it's not just people of color that would that would be intimidated. It's everybody's intimidated when they first get in the water. And I will tell you, there's spots in San Diego back in the 70s. Wind and Sea used to be one of those spots. It's that still, you, it's still it. Oh, is it really? So, and, and South the, Mission and Wind and Sea are probably the two notorious kind of local spots where you get, yeah. get vibed. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and you just got to do what you do and just like smile ignore. and just, you know. Yeah. But it is harder when you're learning because nobody wants to completely be a kook, go over the falls in front of somebody, and then all of a sudden, somebody's, you know, somebody's in your face. And um, it's just, you got to pay your dues like anything else and yeah. get better. And that's, you know, it, it's different now because when I was learning and when you were learning, yeah. we didn't dare go to the main peak. No. We were learning to surf. We were La Jolla Shores where all the blue mats yeah. were back in the you day. Had, <laughs> you had to get good enough. And now any Joe, maybe it might just learn, goes right after the. Yeah. There's an etiquette to doing it right, which. Yeah, it's just like golf and anything yeah. else. So if you were to give a tip to a brand new surfer, what would you say? The, would be to get the largest board you can, right? <laughs> number right. one, and then what's the what, what would be the, what, what would you tell you? Say? Well, I was saying get a get a surf instructor. I mean, that's what I was. I was fortunate to have a great surf instructor at Venice Beach. This uh, young lady named P, and so I that that built my confidence because I surfed with her and her community of people, and I learned, and I was very curious to learn everything, so I didn't step on anybody's toes right. and and stay safe. And then when I got confident to go into the back, you know, I was prepared. Mm -hmm. So I was the benefit is just really like finding a community. And like you said, these affinity groups, oh. there's so many of them now, like Color the Water, SoFi Surf School, yeah. Ebony Beach Club, Texture Waves, that uh, people can tap into. And then they have this safe space where we can surf together and gr with groups of people. What's Trenton your website? Had, Wait, real quick, what's your website? Uh, GreatDayInTheStoke.com. Great day in the Stoke. Trenton had a question. Yeah. Do you prefer a shortboard or longboard? I'm in, I'm shortboard now. Well, it's, well, it's getting close. I'm in. Yeah. I, I got a six ten fish, so right. I'm really enjoying that right That's now. That's a shortboard, man. That's, yeah, it's like a good fun size too, though. I got an Omni, a Slater Design, six ten as well. Do Why don't we send a camera crew out and and and, and, five, and at the next five, surfing eight. event? Five eight. He's at a five I'm on a five eight. eight. <laughs> Chato Seaside. He's also nice. there we go. he's also five Chato. foot eight when he blow dries his hair. And Ernie, <laughs> and, and Ernie has Caddy Hack six coming up. Caddy Hack. It's five and eleven and three quarters. That's what I'm saying. That's all right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's if you, if you spike Tell it. us about Caddy Hack and Wonderfront Fest. So Caddy Hack uh, is uh, an all-day golf event, 225 golfers. We sell it out every year. And what we were talking a little bit about is it benefits boys and men mentoring. And Joe, who's been on the show, which would be a great connection because yeah. it's all the kind of the tough kids in school that most of them don't have a father figure. Mm -hmm. And a large chunk of those are African-American and Latino boys and so it would be a great connection because the big fundraisers we do are Caddy Hack, which is coming up. We'll raise over $300,000. We raise over $450,000 for the 100 Wave Challenge. Nice. So it'd be great to get your group to come wave challenge. and connect with it because it's it's getting everybody together and it's around surfing. Yeah. That's good stuff. Pretty special. Yeah, that's a great connection. Yeah. What's next for you, Trent? I'm training right now. I'm getting some prosthetics ready for the next few years. Uh, we got 2024 Paris. Paralympic Games, so I got a bunch of sockets to test, doing biomechanics, and <laughs> just having fun, man. Club that's where you'll set the world record. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. How, how many yeah. legs do you have? Uh, well, I'm testing five right now. <laughs> so I'm it's... testing my two standing up for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <tell> that. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, yours aren't changing, hopefully. So. Yeah, John and Tammy, what's up with KSON? Yeah. To be, oh, to be in awe of Trent. I know. Right I know. <laughs> well, you, got, you just got a bunch of guests for your program, is what I you know. did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We'd we, love to have you all on for real. We're about to jump into a time right now. Where I think we're booked for the next two, three months, weekends. It's it's crazy time. Great, great problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of live shows. Uh, we're getting uh, getting to start our John and Tammy food oh, fund. Honor the same and this year, which yeah. we're very excited oh. about. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're both going on our flight San mm -hmm. Diego this year, uh, getting our veteran, our heroes to Washington D.C. to see their uh, their. Um, uh, memorials, their monuments before they pass away. Uh, thankfully, Honor Flight San Diego is now bringing Vietnam vets over. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're going to show those men and women the respect they should have gotten way back in the day. And um, just continuing to just, again, two more years in the hey, sunshine. This so great to have you. What a great group. This is possibly my favorite show ever. It all connects. It all connects.
<laughs> All right, God, give it up. A bunch of teammates, too, that would love to learn how to surf. Okay, so Nate good. Llewellyn, Ernie Hahn, Bob Babbitt, Trenton Merrill, John and Tammy, Tommy, yeah. Tommy Sully, yes. Rusty Nails is still on the wall there. The Sully band, Sully band. Apparently the James East band today is right in front.